Hi there, and welcome back to the AgriRouter API developer tutorial. In this additional video, we want to talk about MQTT, build a small MQTT application, and use some new technologies. So, what is this video about? We're going to talk about the basics of MQTT, how to use a router device, how to use push notifications and subscriptions. So the goal of our tutorial today is an example farm management system that has two app instances, both connected to the same AgriRouter account. In real life, this scenario doesn't really make sense, but for our tests, it's just easier to take one application and don't create two applications. So we have our two app instances, both have their own endpoint and we want those two to communicate with each other so that we can send data from app instance one. In particular, we want to send bitmaps and this shall be received through app instance two and vice versa. So we can send from app instance two to app instance one. The application will work file based so if we put a file into the out folder of app instance one we will receive this file or we should receive this file in the in folder of app instance two and vice versa we want to use a router device so that we have one common mqtt connection a short recap on how to make decisions when setting up your application we already talked about it. If you onboard a new application, you have to decide which protocol you want to use. In our case, now we want to use MQTT and we directly know that we have to use JSON as a data format, but we still can decide on the way of connection. It can either be a single connection or a router device. And as I already told, we want to use a router device. So first things first, let's talk about what is MQTT. MQTT is basically a protocol to exchange messages on a publish subscribe principle. So what does that mean? In this example, we have, let's say it's a car, we have a panel that sh uh, show all information and that can send commands. And we have a driving engine, we have the light and we have the heating system. So the panel works with all of the data. It wants to have the information if the light is on, if the, what is the temperature and what is the velocity. So it subscribes for those messages and the panel itself publishes the message that the light shall be switched on, that the temperature shall be set to a specific value or that the velocity shall be set to a specific value. The corresponding systems subscribe for the required messages and the broker receives those subscriptions and creates a subscription table. So whenever the broker receives such a topic, it will recognize in its subscribers list to who it should forward the message. So let's take an example. If the light system publishes the status of the light, this will be forward to the client one to the panel. If the heating system publishes the temperature, this will also go to the panel, but additionally, the driving system wants to know about the temperature. So this is the general principle of how MQTT works, but how does MQTT work in context of the agri-router? If we take a look at our example, we have two app instances that want to communicate with their two corresponding endpoints. Normally we would have one broker for each endpoint and each app instance would be connected to the broker. The messages that shall be sent to the inbox are subscribed by the endpoint and the messages that will be received from the outbox are published by the endpoint. So on the app instance side, this would mean that we publish messages under the topic measures 
and that we subscribe for the topic commands to receive the information from our endpoint. The actual topics are not only measures and commands, but measures slash endpoint ID and commands slash endpoint ID. Um, you can see this in the documentation. However, if we would run one broker per endpoint, that would mean that we would have to connect multiple MQTT clients, one client per broker, and this could cost a lot of resources for the application. And therefore we will use a router device. A router device acts as a broker and this way we only have to set up one MQTT connection and can exchange data if we subscribe to the right topics. So let's take a look at the general workflow of communication. We already talked about this one, so I will go through it quite fast. We have to send the capabilities and subscriptions, then we can send our files and telemetry information. We have to keep our app instance status up to date. We can receive the messages through the feed and we can request and receive a list of potential and actual endpoints that we can send data to or receive data from. The last two look like we receive something from the agri-router, but they are request-based, so we have to request the feed message and we have to request the endpoint list. There is only one message that is delivered to us without any request, and this is the push notification. The push notification can deliver files and telemetry data just like the feed messages can. You might wonder why the get feed messages is still part of this workflow. And the reason is simple. You cannot make sure that you receive every message through the push notification. For example, if your MQTT connection breaks down, you might miss some messages. Therefore, you should request the feed messages even though you use push notifications. But you can request them on a lower frequency. So we have three types of messages that can actually be received from the agri-router and receiving messages in MQTT, especially in the Java implementation, is done through callbacks. You will see this in the source code. So let's directly jump in and start some development. As there is already a lot of source code available from the previous parts of the tutorials, I've already created an example application and only left those parts of the source code open that we would have to fill to learn about the new technologies like MQTT. The first to do that we will have to handle is the creation of a router device. We outsource this to a JSON file, but we have to fill in some JSON structure here. So to do so, we go to our browser and click on router mm. devices. We create a new one and our new router device was successfully created. It's that one here and we can click on the connection details. We can download all the properties of this router device to a JSON file. Very important, every time you download the certificate, you renew the certificate. So whenever you click on download, your old certificate might be outdated. Okay, we have to select a type. I select PM. Confirm. Yes, let's directly open this. And we can fill this one in. And there we go, we have a certificate, a secret, and a device alternate ID that we want to communicate with. And here is our actual host. About the port, I recognized that in many places, MQTT might be a problem when going through a router. So if you have initial problems connecting to the server, I would advise that you either check if your router blocks this port or a very simple test connected to an access point of your smartphone because the mobile connection mostly works. 
Okay, so we have our router device. First stuff is done and we need two onboarding responses. Super simple, we've done this before. We take our application from the tutorial part where we onboard our farming software and there's only one thing we have to change. We want our application to communicate using MQTT, so we have to change the gateway ID to MQTT. If we run that one, as always, we click on the link. We click connect. And here we go. The onboarding should have worked in the background. Let's see what we got here. This looks like an onboarding response. Here we go. First onboarding response. Now, if we go to AgriRouter, we can check if we received a new endpoint. And if we go to endpoints, we can see that our application was onboarded. And as you might have recognized, the name is different from the other parts of the tutorial because in the new version of AgriRouter, we always add a timestamp to the name of the application. So if you connect multiple endpoints or if you connect multiple app instances within a short time, you will still be able to see which one was the first one and which one was the second one you onboarded. Additionally, the overview here changed a little bit, starting by having the routings as major tabs and having some additional endpoint details like when was the last message sent. This is quite nice for debugging communication issues. Additionally, you might have recognized that there is already a routing available. This is new because there was an additional group added. We already had this machine group where all telemetry units and machines are automatically put in. And now we have this additional group for farming software and telemetry platforms. And by default, those two groups are connected with all possible message types. And each farming software is thrown into a farming software group and each CU is thrown into the CU telemetry and machine group. Okay, back to our endpoints. So far, we only have one endpoint, but we need a second one. So let's run the whole program again. But first, we have to make sure that our ID here is different. As we use UUID random ID, there is no issue. But if you have this part of the software hard coded, you will have to change it. Otherwise, you don't create a new endpoint. You will simply re onboard your existing endpoint. This means you receive new certificates, but everything else is the same and you won't have an additional endpoint in the AgriRouter UI. So now that we made that sure and that we know, okay, we're using MQTT and a different external ID. We can just run this one again. Connect. And here we have a new onboarding response. Again, copy and beautify that one. And now we have both our endpoints available. Now let's see what else we have to do. We need to add a dependency. There is a dependency of convenience functionalities for the API. And this is also new. We now have versions that are based on different JDKs. 
Okay, what is next? We have to load the router device. Again, there is a lot of source code available already here. And we have, for example, this source code that is used to load the onboarding response. And what we want to do is quite the same, but for a different structure or for a different class. So we can simply copy the upper one and don't use an onboarding response, but a router device. Now we load our router device. This happens in the main part of the software here. And we load our onboarding responses that are written to a list. And for each of those onboarding responses, we just return our device alternate ID. Um, this is required for testing the software later on so that we have the ID that we know how to name the file. Okay, now we need some MQTT specific elements. First, we need our MQTT client service. This is part of the convenience API. And now we create our MQTT client. We could do this from the onboarding response, but here we use our router device. Like in the other parts of the tutorial, we need several services for setting capabilities, sending files, sending subscriptions, and so on. And here we use a special implementation that is used for the MQTT connection. You will only need the services to be different. You don't need to exchange the message parameters and so on. That's all the same. Only the sending is different and therefore we need different services. Their name is the same as the name of the services we used with the REST interface. Only the code of the implementation is different and therefore we need different imports. For example, if we start with our set capabilities service, there are two implementations. Number one is the one for MQTT and number two is the one for REST. So we use the one for MQTT and here you can see the difference is that we need our MQTT client. By the way, our MQTT client is of type IMQTT client. So it's only an interface. Now let's add our other services, the subscription service and the list endpoint service. This one is only required because I want to output the number of available endpoints as a debug output. And our send message service to send our file. Now we can remove the two to-dos. Now the next thing we have to do is sending the subscription command. And what we need to do here is filling a set subscription parameters element, creating one and filling the parameters. First, we start with our onboarding response, of course. And now we need a list of subscriptions. Let's call it subscription list. Create that one. and add one element, one subscription of type bitmap. Set technical message type bitmap. So the other two parameters are only required for the telemetry messages. We can leave those two empty. Right. this to do is done as well now before we can send our subscriptions of course we have to create our MQTT connection well connect MQTT needs to be implemented
Connecting to an MQTT broker is done using MQTT client .connect with result and to set up all the options we use our router device. Now we get a marking here and this is because this one could throw an exception. Now to check if the connection worked, we create an IMQTT token and this is returned from the connect with result. Now in case this does not directly work, perhaps because we don't have a network connection, let's put this one into a loop. Of course, this is not the perfect solution, but um, yeah, working with the exceptions that might make the whole tutorial a little long. So we'll just do it this way. Now we are connected to our MQTT broker, but we would not receive any message from the outbox yet because we have to subscribe for those messages first. So let's do this for each entry in our endpoint list and we subscribe for commands. So now we are subscribed, but still we wouldn't receive any message because we didn't provide any callback functionality that the MQTT client could yeah, push the received information to. So let's add a set callback. And we already created an object, but this is not yet filled. It's MQTT callback adapter. We've already defined this object with our own class, which is called MQTT callback impl. But we have to implement the functionalities of MQTT callback to this class. As you see, we've got three methods here, one callback that is called when the connection is lost, one callback that is called when a message arrived, and one that is called when the delivery of a message was completed. So to fill all this would be a little long for the tutorial, so I've already created some basic software parts, and we will only have to fill in gaps. So this is our partly filled class. We have based on MQTT callback a few functionalities that we've overwritten. We add the MQTT client here so that we can reconnect if we receive the message that the connection got lost through this functionality. And very important, we are running in an additional thread here, so we have to use synchronized. Whenever we receive a message, a message arrive will be called and we will receive the MQTT message and the topic under which this message was published. And the topic is required for us to recognize which endpoint actually sent this message. We can extract the message string from the payload and then just extract the envelope and the payload wrapper, just like we've done this with the REST interface in the other parts of the tutorial. Now we have a list of possible message result types and for us, the most important one is the push notification because if we receive a push notification, we will receive a file. Additionally, we print the number of endpoints whenever we receive a new endpoint list. If we receive a push notification, we check which endpoint sent the message and then we want to save the file. As you can see, we have an endpoint list here and we have a add endpoint functionality that looks like it is not yet called in the program so we will have to do this but once this is called we can go through the list and compare the topic so if the connection criteria get command is equal to our topic this is 
actually the endpoint we were looking for. Now let's add this add endpoint. Let's start with creating our MQTT callback adapter. And now let's go through our list of available endpoints and add each of these endpoints to our list within the MQTT callback adapter. And if we go to connect, yes, here we set the MQTT callback. So this should all be fine. What else do we have to do? Publish image. Well, this looks like we already have a function. We already read the file information and we already create the message. The only thing that's missing is the sending direction and the recipients list. Let's just add an empty list here. And this way we publish this message. So last but not least, let's load the key source so that we can properly connect to the MQTT connection. As you see, there are two different types of certificates required. One is a global certificate required to connect to the MQTT broker in general. And the second is the certificates required to communicate with the particular endpoints. So let's add our key store. If we look at our project, we have a key store JKS down here. And so we will add this to the system. And we set the password so that the certificate can be decrypted. Now, if we run that one, oh, we got an error here. And if we run on, there is another error. Capabilities for endpoint not known. Well, I think the reason for that is a timing issue, because if we go up, a little bit in our source code we send the onboarding and we directly send the subscriptions so that the accurate router does not recognize that the capabilities were already sent and so it thinks the capabilities are not available so let's add some sleep timer we add five seconds after each function and let's try this again And here we go. Our capabilities are set. Everything worked. And here we can see that we have no endpoints available yet. And this is simply due to the reason that we did not set any routing. So let's do this. We select our endpoint, click on the plus. Now we select the other farming software that we want to send data and we can only select images because bitmaps are the only capability both of those apps have in common. Let's do the same thing for the other application. We could as well have selected the receive from instead of selecting the other endpoint, but However, now we've set up routings from both applications to each other. So now that we set the routings, we have to wait a while until the routings were updated. Now we have one endpoint available that can receive such messages. And let's just try to send a file. This is our out, out folder, and this is our in folder. So if we rename this one with 
the device alternate ID of one of our endpoints. Should take around one second. And the file is sent. And if we go to the inbox, here we go. There is our file successfully received. Let's check the other direction. And here we go, we received the file through the other endpoint. All right, looks like our tool is running and working. Of course, for a real life application, you would have to add stuff like chunking and of course, exception handling. We didn't do this in this tutorial. However, thank you for watching. And in case of any questions, feel free to send us an email.